Welcome fellow Last Pacers to another episode of LPF Debrief where Chris and I talk about comic books, movies, and TV shows. And on today's episode, we will be talking about Moon Knight, episode two. Yeah, two, two, two. And just like the same way we start all episodes of Debrief, we are going to shame Yendi for not watching the content that we think he would like, and he just decides not to watch it. So, shame. Shame. And as always, guys, if you like the content, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff, share, let a friend know, you know, all that stuff. And as always, spoilers ahead. So if you don't like spoilers, just turn it off now or hit the save button and then watch it later. But if you don't care about spoilers, then just join us. <laughs> so episode two of Moon Knight. Chris, let's get right into it. I got to make sure I don't... Uh get halo and moon knight makes it no kidding it's impossible to do <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. don't do that don't do that yeah um uh this episode has made me question a lot of things i not in a bad way love the episode but i'm just trying to like get what point of view like where i'm at and everything and um it's become a really fun show that um me and my wife sit and we're like by the end of it we're like okay so do you think like this is ha like it's it's a great conversation starter compared to all the other shows that we've had so far where it's like I'm watching it and I'm in awe. This is the one that really gets me like I'm thinking really hard about it and um, I'm enjoying that quite a bit. So, yeah, man, this episode, fantastic, just just like the first and I'm really loving the series and uh, I'm actually going to be resubscribing to uh, the Marvel uh, the Marvel app. Yeah, so I can read the comics because I, I'm really interested in this guy. Also, suit Moon Knight all the way. But uh Mr. What you, Knight? Yeah, what Mr. Knight. That? Okay, cool. Yeah, he mm. I was like, this man's yeah. fresh. <laughs> he looks so dope. <laughs> yep. But uh and speaking yeah. of Mr. Knight, now that you mentioned him, I am gonna start doing a thing where if we're talking about comic books, I'm going to reference where that comic, like a first appearance of like costumes and stuff like that. If you do want to find the first appearance of Mr. Knight, it's actually volume one, issue 19 of Moon Knight. If you find it, that's his technical first appearance. He wasn't, um, he then shows up again in the 2014 series where he's like actually dressing up. But in it, in the issue that he first appears, it was Moon Knight dressing up because he had a special mission and he was just looking a little fancy. But um, yes, the design of that costume, it is one of my favorites. Um, I do have covers of Mr. Knight just for the covers, but those are in storage because I was going to pull out some books to show you guys, but yeah. I'll pop them up on the screen. Uh, what did you say? Yeah. Volume one, issue 19? So volume one, issue 19. Okay. Is, is, he's not on the cover of that one though. Okay, but we can uh, show him what, yeah, what the cover looks like. Of the book, but he's, uh, yeah, that's his first appearance of that. Um, yeah, the whole episode definitely just, like I said, uh, for the first episode of Debrief, what this is just showing how an amazing actor Oscar is because like Oscar Isaac is just doing, he's literally playing two roles and he's able to have that conversation with himself and being able to like really make you feel how different Mark and Steve are. Right. And I think that's one of the, the, the highlights, right? Because you can even see it in his body language, right? Like just the demeanor of how Mark carries himself. And how Steve carries himself. They're so like polar opposite, but it's so cool to see Oscar Isaac be the same person and just have a conversation with himself, which has to be difficult now that I think about it. like how, like knowing that you're the next person in dialogue. I I would imagine that <laughs> would be fill like, it in, really yeah. difficult, right? Like you're like talking. <laughs> you say the line, you're like, you're like oh. okay. Mm -hmm. But you, all right, yeah, here you we like, go. <laughs> also have to like literally just change, like I was saying, your demeanor. And I know you can do some camera tricks to make it easier. Um, on you but like still it's it's still really difficult to have a full conversation with yourself about anything and so, and the and fact that he probably has to, the the fact that he probably has to change not like i'm sure they give him time mm -hmm. but like you can't be like all right cut and then all right give me like two minutes to get into this case that's just like he, he i'm sure he can swap it on and off and yeah. he you know he's doing a good job whenever i'm sitting there and i'm like on the couch i'm like man mark's a dick like, yeah. you know, like I see it as two different people. Can, so yeah. like, you know, so yeah, but anyway. And it's just a, such a great way to show, like I said, um, 
it's just a great way to show the character of Moon Knight because, again, my, Moon Knight in the comic books is he does have like schizophrenia and all that stuff. So this is a good way of showing, hey, this is how this character works. And they're doing a fun take on it. Like not a fun take, but I guess they're taking a different take, but they're still making the character relevant as what the character is. And I love when um, when when the shows do that, and which I will talk about in a other episode of Do It Team Brief. But again, like <laughs> it's just really cool to show how he can maneuver through the cycles. Like even when he was having that whole conversation with Layla and he's just like, literally like, listen, I'm not the person you think I am. Like I'm trying to prove to you that I am not this person, you know? And I thought that was really cool. And then um, uh, it was really nice to see that scene where he goes into Mark's hideout, which if you guys didn't know, um, if you scan that QR code, you actually get a comic book that you can read. Oh crap! I forgot to do uh, it. Dang it! Yeah, yeah, you I gotta can go actually back. read uh, a comic on there, which is like a doppelganger ep- uh, issue of the book, which obviously makes sense, right? So go check that out. Apparently, they're supposed to be doing this more than once, um, but you can scan that QR, which is code really cool because that just shows like they're just trying to bring more people into the comic, but like they they're like, hey, we're telling our story, but also this is where we're pulling from, so like mm-hmm. you should read it. So yeah, I think that's awesome yeah, for sure. And I think it, like I said, and it, which is one of the things that gave me the idea to be like, well, I should start telling you guys like where to know, find them. Yeah. Where to find these books. And just so you guys can know if you want the first issue of Moon Knight is actually from werewolf uh, 32 werewolf by night 32. If you ever want to find it, that's actual Healy, his first appearance. It's not his not. I know with comic books, it's really hard to <laughs> like distinguish. Cause you might, you might be like, Oh, issue one of Moon Knight is his first appearance, but that's not how it works. And so. it's overwhelming. And and just so you guys know, if you're new to comics and everything, and I'm still, I still consider myself very new. Um, if you go to a comic book shop, my secret Santa told me he like he went in to give me a comic, and he's like, ah, oh, and he just grabbed one. Um, and and you can start off that way, uh, but you you know do you don't have to do your research, but it's 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 not as bad as it looks. Just try to jump. In. The first step is just jumping in. So it's very um, intimidating because yeah. especially like I always say um, with Marvel also, it's really difficult because it's hard jumping off points because Marvel has a lot of resets, especially because mm-hmm. of the MCU. So, um, but definitely like some people just like to collect to have the covers and things like that. So, like I said, I'm going to try to help you guys if you guys are interested in that and in getting comics. So just because that's something that I do like weekly, Chris knows I'm always like, Hey, Chris, you want to go? But like, I literally weekly am going to pick up new books, old books and all that good stuff. So, which I will be I going soon be and, fun. and doing a pickup. So uh, we got to coordinate a day because I can only do it every once in a while. And I just grab a whole bunch. So yeah. And I do it every week, every, at one point in the week, I am going to the comic book store to pick up a something, uh, whether it's my subscriptions, any of that, but back to the episode. So it's, um, Again, like just introducing the new characters was great. I mean, uh, speaking of being in the, you know, when they're in the little storage locker and then um, they have that whole conversation and he starts to see what Mark is about and like he sees the passport and he sees that, oh, this is an actual like legit person who's like in my body. And then we see Kenoshu, which again, that's his name. I didn't want to spoil it because I don't want to say things that might like, you know, might happen in the future. So we find out, finally find out what he is, what he does. If you ever first, it, he's in the first issue of Moon Knight. Basically, the story is that he becomes, like they say in the episode, uh, Moon Mark becomes his guard, like his guardian, so he can go and you know do all of the stuff that he needs to do. So it's a really cool concept, um, especially if you're into a lot of the um, Egyptian god lore and stuff like that. It really will um, just knowing how they incorporated that, and when you think about it, when Marvel was coming out with this, like this was like the first of it, like really incorporating gods. DC does it a lot, but Marvel was really trying to like, you know, find this character that they can incorporate. And I thought it was really cool that the way that it all went about and just the chase scenes and that locker scene was amazing. Like the whole storage, like how the lights turned like flicker and then he's just chasing him and he's like, give it back. I got to record. I got to record. I got to get a recording of Brie next time we watch an episode and a creepy part comes up and I know it's going to happen. I'm going to record her reaction because when he's there and the lights start flickering and she sees in the background, you see the Cape and then it goes black and then he turns around. 
And he's like looking down the ways and see the cape and it goes black. She's like, oh my God, <laughs> she's stressing mm-hmm. out already. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. um, yeah, it's, it's, he, he is awesome, man. And also I've never, I mean, I was always into the Greek mythology stuff. So, um, this definitely makes me want to read up on, um, uh, Egyptian myth- mythology. Cause, uh, especially after he was like, uh, what was the other goddess that they're trying to, you know, they mentioned in the episode and, um, uh, you know, he's, I think he says like crocodile lady or something like that. Yeah. And I was like, hold on, what? <laughs> and so yeah. I'm like looking it up. So I, I'm, I'm definitely going to jump more into it. Um, yeah, Egyptian uh, gods are really cool. Mm-hmm. Also, if you ever want like a good way to like see like brief stories and stuff like that, if you play download Smite, since they have all the gods in there, it's a really good game to see like all different kind of gods. Mm-hmm. So it's a really good game to like take a look at and be like, oh, okay, I, I know that character now. <laughs> so it's good to see that. And then we see that storage scene, and then he runs out, and then he he meets Layla for the first time, who actually is not a comic book character from the Moon Knight series, like. She has like it's a pretty it's a new MCU character, which I mean, if we're like there is a reach that you can do that there was a character that was a mutant that was has the same name, uh, but she has a different last name. It's not the same exact character, but there's that whole there's a whole theory now that's going around on Reddit and all that stuff because Layla Layla Miller is a mutant who was a was part of the X Men and was in the House of M storyline which if you haven't read is absolutely fantastic. Uh, basically, I'll give you a rundown. Scarlet Witch basically creates a whole nother universe because she is that strong. And Magneto is the leader of the world. And yes, that's all you need to know. And then basically she essentially wipes out the mutant population. The reason, and she only leaves 123. And then she gives every character in the Marvel universe exactly what they wanted. And I won't tell you, like, the... Yeah, she gives them exactly what they wanted. And then it's written by Brian Mc, Michael Bendis. And the character... Like, it's so cool because I'm not... Like I said, I don't want to give away what... Like, how they get out of this. But the character that gets exactly what he wants is the reason why they... Like, uh, he figures what's going on out. No, so, no, no, no. What's the, what's the series called? It's called House of M. Oh, House it's, of M. Okay, I heard you talk yeah, about this. Okay, yeah. House. It's fantastic. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, basically, she, Layla is a character. Layla Miller is a mutant, and then obviously we all know that MCU now has the rights to the X Men again. So people are saying maybe this is you know a plot to start it up. We've already seen um, WandaVision with Speed and Wiccan from you know who are also mutants essentially. Like well, and then obviously Wanda herself never been classified as a mutant because they couldn't at the time. the time when yeah. she was cre- like here we didn't have that so they're just people are just saying hey look at the, look at all these little x-men like deep cuts they're doing so you know hopefully we, we get her soon so but she basically finds out herman mark they're related not related they're married you know what i mean and then obviously mark doesn't want him to have no parts of this and she's all into the egyptians and obviously so is steven so you can already feel the you know the semi like oh i never met someone who knows all this information like me so they they have that 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 weird chemistry that's already about to start yeah and obviously mark wants no parts because he doesn't want to put her in danger yeah and um so this this leads me to a question right that i wrote in my notes um is steven a new is he new is was my question so yeah, essentially he's not like again moon knight's character itself is a character that deals with different personalities yeah That's so you know what i mean but the question what like so the actual question is like do you think in this universe right that um because like you you find out mark was married and everything like that and like i said brie's been um into uh um uh, into the uh, into the what is it called man the the personality thing um and i was and i asked her i'm like do they so are people born with it like or do they have those alters there already or d- can they develop and she's like no they can develop so that led me to the question of like okay are we jumping in steven like he just developed within the past couple months like this is a new thing for mark and in him so like uh, that's uh, that's my thought process going in 
is like, okay, there's no way, like in my head with the marriage and everything like that, I was like, man, my guy's gone for months at a time. You have a passport, all this other stuff. So he's either been dealing with it his whole life and he's been under, or this is a new, um, this is a new development in, in Mark that he has well, to yeah, that, overcome. The thing is from what we, well, from the sources, we don't know how long it's been, Yeah. but from what we have gathered from what they've showed us so far is that we do know, obviously Mark knows something as far as not Mark, Steve knows something about him being moving at night or doing something. Now we don't know, like I said, we don't know the time frame or how long it's been or how long he has known, but clearly we know that there is a time frame around there. We do know like Mark's passport says like 1970 something. So again, it could be either way. I feel like they're going to give us a little bit more explanation of why exactly that is happening because um, I feel like that's something we, we you know, we're going to want to know. So I think um, I know that when he is in the, um, when he is in the, when the cops show up, the detectives and stuff like that, they show up. I know they talked about Mark being in Egypt so clearly Mark has already had this face, you know what I mean? Cause they talked about him being a mercenary with Egypt yeah. and then killing the people, uh, executioner style. So clearly they know about him and the face of him hasn't changed. So again, is this a play on the making the schizophrenia part or like, you know what I mean? The multiple personalities. I think this is a play on all of that stuff. So we're going to see deeper when, once we get into that, into the show. So. Yeah, disassociative identity is what it is there called. Because I keep saying it wrong, and yeah. and I apologize for that. But it, it that's what I meant. Was um, I was just like, man, I feel like Stephen just was developed within the past couple months, and this is just a, a, a another thing. Um, which I thought was like I said, whenever I saw the marriage and everything like that, I'm like, man, my guy has to be gone <laughs> for a while, a while, and it's crazy. Um, and then. Uh, I thought it was cool how in the beginning of the episode, they're sh- they're, they start to show you that um, nobody else can see what he sees. So whenever he, whenever he grabs a security card and he's like, I'm about to blow your mind, man. Are you yeah. ready? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, all right, play it. And then you just see yeah. him standing there and he's like, what are you doing? <laughs> so I, yeah. that whole moment, I'm just like, oh no! Like th- this show makes you feel really bad for him, man, because yeah. everybody he's, just he's thinks going he's going through it. Yeah, he's he's, going he it. is going through it, and then they give you the um, which is such a real moment. I feel like to everybody when he gets fired, and they mm-hmm. give him the pamphlet, and he's like, hey, like I know this is like a common HR thing, but you're not alone. And right. even though you know, like, yeah, you're not gonna do anything for me anyway. That was the realest moment for me right there where I'm just like, man, like, like this guy is, is going through a lot and, uh, yeah. and, and he's trying to figure it all out. Yeah. So. And he's like I said, it's, it's all hitting him at the time. Cause now he's more aware of it, mm-hmm. especially now that he's having conversations with him. So it, it's, it's making, you know, well, at the point of the beginning of the episode, he hadn't had like a full conversation yet, but he's like, you know, he has had conversations where he's like, you know, let me take over and things like that. So yes, he's going through a whole bunch of different trying to figure out what's going on. Um, but we do see the Layla and then we do see the cops then take him over. And then we get to see Haro again, because obviously the cops are working for Haro and he basically tells us his whole story of how everything came about, which Haro is a comic book character. He is in volume two issue two of moon Knight. He actually has one and only appearance. And fun fact, he's actually in this episode. He does tell um, he does tell Steve that he is a former um, he is a former avatar of uh, Kenoshu, and that's not true in the comic books. That's something that they added, which again is fine. It doesn't matter. Like um, I know, like there's some the purists who get upset about stuff like that. Um, I don't. I think it still works for the show. It's working great with him knowing, like, you know what I mean, exactly what Kenoshu is going to do. But also the Kenoshu shots have been amazing in this show. So, like, I love that scene where Harold talks to him and he's like, what is he telling you? Like, oh, that he's the vengeance of justice and like that, like all that. And then you see the shot of him just like holding his staff, <laughs> like in the back. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of things. And he's like, oh, I can't like. And then, he, you know, he goes, can you hear him? And he's like, no, I can't hear him anymore. So. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff like going, you know, that that's going on. 
with and then we find out that Haro was a part of the whole thing so that's why he feels like he knows what's going on and then he he's here to serve a different person um and then what was i going to say and then the fist of vengeance thing is actually a reference to when ghost rider and here's where the the uh the weird stuff that comic books do is the spirit of ghost rider actually merges with moon knight and that's why they call him the fence of vengeance because if you guys know ghost rider obviously the person of vengeance so mm-hmm. fist moon knight yeah that's why that's where that whole comic book reference thrown in was so there you go that's uh, yeah that's crazy also i wanted to point out i feel like mark is still trying to tell steven that this is all a dream because the fact that he still wakes up with the chain on his ankle like back to you know trying to get him back to n- normal uh, i mean obviously by the end of the episode it starts to it starts to change that but i felt like in the beginning there whenever i saw it, i was like i think he's still trying to get him to like no this isn't really happening yeah. <laughs> so well yeah because i think he wanted him to have him in that deep like so that yeah he so he can take he wants, uh, take more you know control I mean? yeah. so he wouldn't be focused or aware of him so i think that's what he was going for so we see that whole scene and then we see Haro get upset and because he won't give him the scarab and Layla comes in with the scarab for whatever reason. I don't know why she thought that was a good idea. And that was one of the things I was just like, why did she, why'd you bring it? <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, right he, here. He trying to keep it away. And like, I don't, I didn't understand why she came in, but I guess in her head, she's already seen Moon Knight. So she knows that the suit is there. And I think she was just like, that's why she comes in and it's like some in the suit. And he's like, what are you talking about? Like, you know what I mean? And then finally we get the name of the episode, which is some in the suit. Like, and then he comes into a suit, but it is, it is Steve's version of the suit, which is Mr. Knight, which like I said, again, if you guys do want the first issue for where he shows up, it is issue what uh, volume one issue 19 but he made like the run in that costume It's the 2014 um it's 2014 i don't know what volume it is but 2014 issue one with warren ellis is where you get to see him like moon knight dressed as him like most like a lot of the times and warren ellis is a fantastic writer has a gr- lot of great work so but we see the the nice get up he looks great he looks super cool and then um and then uh, I love when Mark calls him the he, um, the psycho Colonel Sanders because he has like the Colonel Sanders look. But it, I mean, the costume itself looks fantastic. And of course, he does the super pose. He does the, um, you know, superhero landing pose, which everyone does when they're falling off of something. And so he does that cool. But he just looks badass. Like yeah, he because does. the suit and then the eyes. And like, I will say, um, I'm already ready to call it, but like, out of all the TV shows, I mean, maybe throughout, like, I think he has, like, the best looking costumes. Like, as far as MCU, like, the way that we've seen these costumes, I think Moon Knight's costumes have just looked fantastic. I'm obsessed, the man. The glowing eyes, the bandages, yeah. I, like, the different, oh, it's so cool. And it's already, like, I mean, when we go to Megacon, mm-hmm. we're going to see quite a oh, few yeah. people. Because exactly. already it started. I've seen it on TikTok. People are like, this is the easiest way to make a moon knight mask and i was like man i kind of want to go as one to be honest yeah that's so cool it looks looks fantastic Uh, i'm really impressed with the way it looks obviously steve's feeling himself at this point he knows he has super strength because of the suit and i thought that was a cool concept that they are making the suit itself have the um the strength and all the you know the power and all that stuff so he obviously gets like superhuman like superhuman strength he's more he's stronger he then is like talks does the muhammad ali reference where he's like he looked really cool like backing up and then like oh uh, yeah he's set ready and then he punches <laughs> the thing and then we see layla not being able to see what he saw until she threw something on him and then you could see the outline of the um of the jackal which i thought was a really cool concept because it's like no he's not going crazy but if you see it from the common view it does look like he's going crazy yeah and we see mark trying to get into this and he's like listen man i don't know what you're doing but you like, and but you could see a little respect, right? That Mark gets for him because he's like, this dude actually tried. Like, yeah, yeah. He's he trying did. to do something, and then like he fights him and he lets him off for a while. We also get to see the weapons that um later on, which he didn't use in the whole fight, but when he's like, you know, the sticks. Uh, what are they called? Um, I don't know what nunchucks. you're talking. No, it wasn't nunchucks, was it? No, it was the. It was. I don't know what they. Why do I want to uh, say sticks? Collie sticks. Okay, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so I thought that was the dope. Sticks. 
And I thought that was a really cool touch. And then we see that whole fight scene, which again, everything from this show has been looking real good. Like the fight scenes look good. Um, CGI for when they use it looks good. Uh, obviously, you know, it's uh, Steve's first time fighting. Doesn't look too good. Get lands that one punch and then that was it. <laughs> and then when he gets and beat he up just, on the bus, bro, oh, yeah, then, or in the front of the bus, people are just staring. Yeah. He's just smacking his face against like, it. Back, back. <laughs> and then he gets the car when they get yeah. the car and then like it all separate, like he, him and the jackal separate. And then obviously he gets up, he sees the mirror, which I thought was really cool how they used the mirror concept for like him talking to each other, which again, we saw yeah. from episode one, which was going to be like the continuation of that. And then Mark is finally like, all right, dude, you did great. Like, let me in. Yeah. And, and then he's like, okay, cool. And then we see the full reveal of the costume, like just him, like the eyes turn and oh my God, like I said, I can't get over how good his costume looks. And then we see that sick scene where he's just running across the night. Like, you know what I mean? Like running on the rooftop and just, he has it, uh, the crest through his chest, like that he's able to use. And then we just see the, obviously the more skilled person with the suit being skilled with the suit. And then um, obviously he kills the Jackal. And I just thought that whole scene for me was like, man, they, we've come such a long way because I never thought, we would have, hold on. I never thought we would have a like Moon Knight TV show. And just to see that kind of stuff for me is just, I, I, it's just amazing. So, yeah, man, it's, um, I was going to say, uh, also with that transition of them changing, uh, you know, Steven find, finds a way to sit, uh, I called it passenger. He's, he's, mm -hmm. he's going to be more aware of what's going on. So I'm assuming we're going to start seeing more of them talking back and forth and trying to figure something out um although by the end of this episode we saw more of um we got more of the feeling that we were going to see like maybe at least a full episode now um, of just mark. mark yeah and see what's going on the, yeah yeah way of the conversation but we also found out that kenoshu is trying to tempt mark with saying like if you don't do what i ask you to do you're we're going to take layla and she's going to be my next like you know Mm -hmm. my next avatar so and he doesn't want that because he doesn't want her to get close and then that was a conversation that mark and um steve were having so it was really cool and then you see the the agitation of mark like he knows he's in a situation that he shouldn't be in because they officially have lost <laughs> they lost the uh what, what was it called i can't the compass the, the scarab thing call it the scarab yeah. the compass um so they they've lost it and he no realizes it and he realizes that he's going to have to go back and try to obtain it or find a way for them to not go revive the god. So it's um he's in a very pickled situation. He didn't want Layla involved. She's involved. He doesn't have the scarab, which is annoying. And now he has Kenoshu on his back telling him, like, you need to hurry up and fix this so that you can, you know, so I don't take her as my next avatar. Yeah. So, yeah, man. So yeah, we're in a really interesting spot. Um, I, like I said, I think this next ish, uh, next episode is going to be more of us seeing what Marcus like past was. We might see what happens on why he is part of Steve's life, or you know why him and Steve are are merged essentially. So we might get more details on that for episode three. But I do expect to see some some a little more fighting scenes. In episode three, because obviously if we're going to follow Mark, we know it's going to be a more aggressive path than it is going to be for Steve. So, I mean, next episode will technically be the mid-season finale. So I do expect... Oh, God, only six episodes. I forgot. Yeah. yeah. So I, I do expect something pretty big. So, Damn. yeah. But yeah. before we wrap up, as always, Chris, what was your favorite part of this episode? Favorite part is probably the conversation of, um, you know, uh, what's the guy's name again? I, I always forget his name. Haro? Yeah um be uh trying to befriend steven and yeah. uh showing him that hey like at that moment that he comes up and you see the wind blow up and he's like he can't that's all he can do like he yeah. can't do you you don't have to listen to him um so like reiterating to steven like hey man you're okay so that whole moment of trying to become friends with him and, and show like uh, i mean i did get the sense that i'm like um you know everything was cool it, it was cool because Steven felt the same way you're following Steven and it's just like, Oh, this guy might not be that bad until he asked about the, the killing children thing. Exactly. So that whole talking point was my favorite. Yeah. That, that was my favorite part of the episode. 
yeah. was going me, through that um, with him. My favorite part, like I said, would be the just that end that end scene where he, where Mark fully takes on the suit. And like I said, as a person who's liked all these grounded characters like Daredevil, Batman. I know Batman's not Marvel, but you know what I'm getting yeah. at. Like those kind of characters and Moon Knight. Like I've always had an Iron Fist. Like I've always had a love for those characters. Cap. Like you know what I mean. I like the grounded characters. So for me to see him in like full action now, not just like him beating up and him just running across rooftops and stuff like that. I found that like really cool. Cause again, for me, that's like my childhood of just reading those comics and then seeing it in motion. Finally, it just, you just always get that sense of, of happiness. So um, that would, was my favorite part. I instantly was like freaking out once he started running and I was just like, ah, <laughs> so I was, I was really excited about that, but all right. I think that's going to be the end of the episode for us guys. If you enjoy the content, please like subscribe, do all that good stuff. Um, go back and check out episode one. If you haven't already, um, we will be doing all the episodes, all six episodes. So you'll see a video for us for the next six weeks for moon Knight. So, well now through four weeks. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And if you guys, like I said, want to be a part, want to have a conversation with us, please join us. You know, we always are taking new people, to talk we like to add new opinions so come on down so but until next time which is going to be real soon <laughs> fire team <laughs> out